Hey guys, welcome back to another screencast. Today I'll be showing you how to get a really good, tight, clean sound from your microphone when doing any sort of YouTube commentaries or any voiceover work for videos. Uh, so the program I'm using is Audacity, which is a free open source sound editor. You simply get it from the link in the description. It's on the SourceForge, so you know you can trust it. This is a hugely brilliant application for what it is, it being free. Loads of even professional, say YouTubers, use it for recording audio because it's free, it's simple, and it does does what you want it to do really, really quickly, simple, and just brilliantly. So, obviously, what you're going to want to do first thing is you're going to make sure your microphone's been plugged in and all set up correctly. Uh, so, select your microphones from the list here, and then you're just going to want to record something. So, I'm just going to record a little test segment here. Hello, this is a test of the microphone recording one two test test I'm gonna play that back now hello this is a test of the microphone recording one two test test okay so you can see there this audio you know is reasonably quiet um, and it's sort of the volume is sort of it kind of got loud in these parts here, then it's quiet in this part here, this bit sort of quiet here. So what we do to fix this is we use something called a compressor. Now what a compressor will do is we'll make the whole sound um, roughly all of the same volume. So it'll bring the quiet bits up and it'll bring the, the loud bits down um, to try and make the waveform as even as possible. But at the same time it also does, it will tighten up the sound as well to give you much just a little bit cleaner sort of more professional sounding um, quality microphone if you if you uh, wouldn't want to call it that so to do that just go to effect compressor now bearing in mind if I was to just amplify this real quickly using the default amplification you can see that now this bit here if I try and gain this bit up you can now tell there is a lot of background noise, which is where we, which is why we use the compressor here to do this. So undo gain, and I'm also going to do undo gain as well, undo amplify, there we go. So go to effect compressor with the, the audio you want to compress selected. Um, now bearing in mind the compressor, yes, it will amplify the, the background noise, but we can fix that afterwards. So the settings I use for this is threshold is minus 16 decibels, the noise floor is minus 40 decibels the ratio this is how much you want to compress the sound you can over compress the sound in the sense that you can tell it's being compressed because it will just sound too tight sometimes it can just make the audio it kind of seem a bit weird as if say you were um turning the treble up and down on the on an eq um it would kind of make it sound like that um but you can also under compress it where it's not going to compress it enough um, so I found that this is a really nice ratio that works, 6.5 to 1. Attack time 0.2 seconds and decay time is 1 second. This is how you specify how tight you want the sound to be. Because um, the attack time is um, sort of the start of the audio, sort of the start of the compression. is how much it's going to leave before it actually compresses the sound. And decay time is going to be how much, again... Uh, it does it how much it's going to leave before it compresses at the end of the audio um, so these are the settings I use copy those um, see if it sounds good if it doesn't then play around with it you must make sure it says compressed bakes based on peaks and get rid of this makeup gain for zero decibels after compressing that just means that it will compress it and then it will then amplify it even further to try and make up what audio it's lost uh, like that um but I, I find that doesn't really work um of what we need it doesn't work either so compress based on peaks click ok you can now see it's now amplified all the audio we have now a much more even wave form here yeah, obviously it's not perfect um because it's not going to be perfect um again if we had, select a hard, harsher ratio then maybe it would have been more perfect but this See here, for the most part, it's pretty much the same volume level, which is good. We do now have amplified background noise, so if I was to just use the gain control here to see if I can amplify it. Yeah, so to fix that, what we simply do is I'm just going to zoom in on this, that's a bit too far, the audio here to try and find a bit where we've got a lot of background noise, maybe here. 
maybe there's a longer bit here that might be a bit better. That's a bit better. So now i found that, what I'm also going to do as well, I was just going to quickly play the whole thing just in general so you can see what it sounds like. Make sure I put the game back. Hold it there. Hello, this is a test of the microphone recording. One, two, test, test. Okay, so now you see it's a lot, lot louder, but again, the background noise is going to be amplified. So if we find a bit with background noise, you can use this game control to just hear it a bit better. There we go. Then go to effect noise removal and says so step one here we're going to click get noise profile now what this will do is it will take the background noise you've selected and audacity will look at the frequencies and it will just analyze that just that particular sound of the background noise so it knows what background noise is it knows what you're looking for and then you just simply select the audio you want to add the noise removal to in this case the whole thing so i'm just going to do Control a to select all of it and then go back to noise removal again effect noise removal now step two um, this is actually removing the noise so again make sure you've got the noise set to remove not isolate these settings here I think were the standard settings I have um, noise reduction 24 sensitivity 0 frequency smoothings 150 and attack and decay which is 0 0.15 seconds I've not needed to play around with these settings it's pretty much worked first time um, pretty much everything you can play around if you want, but the standard settings should work fine. Just make sure the noise is set to remove, not isolate. Click OK. You can now see Audacity has gone through. Depending on how long the audio is, it may take a while. So now, you can see here, it's um, gone ahead. And the background noise we did have is now, uh, you can see the waveform here is now almost completely flat there's still a few bits here which we can just go ahead and we could delete manually using the delete key same with the end here just to clean that up a bit more so now if I try and go to here and see if I can get the noise to back to the bit here where we remove the noise now obviously it's not perfect but again I'm amplifying that very loudly so it's gonna be it's gonna you can still hear it like that but if I was just to play this back now Hello, this is a test of the microphone recording. One, two, test, test. Then that's a lot better. We've got rid of the background noise. However, you, I don't know if you was able to pick that up in the video or not. But for me, at least it was distorting on the speaker slightly. Now to fix this, what I usually do anyway is once I've compressed an audio, done the noise remover, I usually go to amplify and just take it down by five decibels. Yes, this is going to make it quiet. But this is so that when Audacity exports it, it isn't distorted. Like There's a lot more room for this audio to play around with, so there's less chance of it clipping and distorting. And then what I can then do is, in my video editor, I can then just raise the volume again if I need to. And in Premiere Pro, I can just use the built-in limiter function to prevent the distorting anyway. Um, so now if I was to play this back. Hello, this is a test of the microphone recording one two test test now uh, I don't know if you were able to tell again in that in the video but uh, it's no longer distorting for me uh, which is cool and it sounds really clean and tight now so now all you simply do is just go and export your sound if you've got the mp3 plugin and you can do it as mp3 if you want to um, if you're gonna do it as an mp3 I recommend make sure you do a constant bitrate uh, stereo or joint stereo, it doesn't really matter, I usually just leave it as stereo. Um, quality, um, for YouTube I usually will do um, 160, um, for YouTube anything from 160 to 192, those are the two bit rates you're going to want for YouTube videos, they're high, it's high quality. If you're doing like, a lot of music, um, then you're going to want to export it at 320. Um, However, I will usually just um, do a dot .wave format, which is a Microsoft format, and it's higher quality than MP3 because um, an MP3 will compress the audio again even further to try and get the file size down. With dot with the wave format, it doesn't do that, so um, it's going to be bigger file size. But you're going to get the actual audio exported as it was in the editor, so there's no compression done on that. Um, so to go ahead and explore that you can see I've already done one from one of my videos there and 
that's pretty much it done, really. So now we've just got, we've cleaned up our sound, our microphone sound, got rid of the background noise, made it really tight and professional sounding. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully this hasn't been too long of a screencast for you. And uh, stay tuned for some more videos. If you like this video, like it, comment, subscribe and share with your friends.